I hate you. I've never hated anyone more. Every nerve ending in my body is electrified by hatred. There is a fiery pit of hate burning inside me, ready to explode. The show was pretty controversial when it came on. Excuse me. I'm the Chris just a chaser. We were always getting in trouble for kind of pushing the envelope too far. From parents, television associations, and watch groups. We've tried to push it. Damn that mother chucker. It is a little bit out of hand. It can be. Step any closer and I'll scream. You better believe you will. I hope you did your yoga. This could go on a while. You can't really watch the show with your family. Or I, <laughs> I can't. Topless on Valentino's yacht. Serena's been a, a bit too scandalous. Stop talking. Start partying. Definitely, we've had some great uh, milestones on Gossip Girl in terms of feeling like cultural permeation is happening. Magazine covers, when they started coming, that felt very special. New York Magazine put us on the cover as the best show ever. There was an asterisk <laughs> qualifying that, but it still said that. We've done wonderful shoots together. I mean, it was my first experience doing anything like that. I know we're fantastic, funny days. We got name checked by Obama. Obama name checked the show? What? What is, is, is he on like uh, Gossip Girl or something? That's pretty huge. Camera's set. We've also had some pretty intense crowd situations, just in terms of actors getting mobbed and just knowing that now we have to have security on the set. Can I take your picture? One of the first times we shot down on Central Park South, outside the plaza, all of a sudden you just have like these crowds of people. That was a strange thing. It was very surreal for me. I don't think I was aware of what a big deal the show was until I was in it. A book written about you guys, it sounds exciting. There was literally like 40 paparazzi and 200 just girls screaming and gathered around our trailers. They like to pet my hair, which is very strange. I remember the first year when we first saw our pictures on a building, and I was just like, come on. <laughs> it was crazy there for a minute. I remember Penn grabbed me, he's like, man, I've never had my head like on a, on a billboard, you know? It was just so novel, you know, and just such a cool time. Oh. To be 20 years old, to not be broke, and uh, to be sharing it with like six other kids going through the same thing, there's very literally nothing like it. And to your left, everyone to your left. It was just like parties constantly and like tinted windows and lights and like clothes that were given to you. And it's just like, where am I? The, what, what's going on right now? I think they had their fun. They've gotten to see New York in a way that maybe only their characters could understand. I just wish that they would leave me alone. Oh, is that why you got your hair blown out? <laughs>We have some of the most passionate, vocal fans, I think, uh, in the history of television. My Twitter feed is often just a war between Dan and Blair shippers and Chuck and Blair shippers. So it's just dare versus chair in a battle royale. You kissed me back. I felt it. It doesn't matter what you think you felt. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. Even when we were doing the OC, there was only like one or two websites where fans could post comments. And since then, the fan community and the online community has just grown. And certainly Gossip Girl has been a part of that. We'll like walk out of our trailer for a second and a picture will be taken of us. And immediately everything you're wearing, it's like, get this there, get this there, get this there, get this there. Also, he looks like shit. You know, it's <laughs> or he looks tired, he looks sad. Do you think he's thinking about, you know, it's just like, whoa, slow your roll, guys. I'm just like going to get breakfast. <laughs> Why are you still following me, Nate? Having to kiss Chase out in front of the Plaza Hotel, having thousands of teenage girls crying and screaming at me, no, like, why? <laughs> I mean, that's what I was talking about. Our fans were actually a lot older than people originally thought. We hear about people in their 20s and their 30s and their 40s. I mean, I can't tell you how many people come up to me and say, I know I'm not the target demographic, but I love the show. My grandparents still, I get texts from Nami sometimes saying, I don't like you with that MILF anymore. Is this the master bedroom? Let's destroy it. And I'm like, Nami, watch your mouth. I hope she sees this. 
My best friend was right. Saying yes makes everything better. Or no, I'm sorry. It wasn't MILF. I take it all back. It was Cougar. Now this is really going to get me in trouble. It was Cougar. Nice to meet you, by the way. Um, Nate. Hmm, that's a great name. Uh, and you are? Done now. She's on stage, but I have her dress. You mean Serena's on the runway of Eleanor Waldorf's show in a design not made by Eleanor Waldorf? Oh dear. Eric Damon, our costume designer, has done an amazing job since the pilot of really being able to express character through costume and build not just great fashion moments over episodes, but real iconic identities for each of the characters. Excuse me. You exceed even my high expectations. I feel like the clothing really is kind of the actor's coat of arms, and when they put on their clothes, it kind of helps them become the character. Like when Leighton walks in, she couldn't be any more different than who Blair Waldorf is, and she's like, when I put on my headband, I am Blair Waldorf. I'll take that, thank you. Even with hair and makeup, it's the difference of putting on this outfit that Blair would only put together, and that brings the character to life even more. Blake, I think it's a much more symbiotic relationship where Blake inspires Serena and Serena inspires Blake. This girl has it. People that wear these clothes have to be very bold and very confident and very wealthy. So Eric really helps us create our characters with that. I'd ask how you are, but I don't really care. I mean, I, I'd say I'm great. Look at my hair, my clothes, my body. It gives you uh, a body language. It gives you a, a posture that only that particular character can walk with. And you know, when you're in seven inch heels, you're walking differently than when you're in sneakers. And we also have so many places to wear all of these clothes. Move. I have a Humphrey to squash. They really go to a lot of parties. I'm always dressing in these amazing party outfits. Every episode there's a brilliant gala or you know, seeing Blair in her prom dress or Ed in his croquet outfit in the Hamptons. It's sort of glamorous in a way that, that old Hollywood used to be glamorous, where people really dressed. I think my most favorite outfit to date has been my debutante dress. I just felt like a princess. You look fantastic. Who are you wearing? Badgley Mishka. It's great. My fashion was, was more, you know, sailing on a yacht, you know, like, like, like a Nautica ad. What's with the business formal? Are you being arraigned for something? I actually I would always love to see what Ed stepped out wearing. You know, in the beginning, it was way more ridiculous. You know, yellow socks and, like, his ascots and the whole thing. The Chuck Bass scarf evolution into ascot into wide cravat. Uh, <laughs> I like your use of cravat. I thank you, Stephanie. I wouldn't have learned cravat if it wasn't for my time on Gossip Pro. <laughs> it's quite a sad story, actually, because I'm a big fan of ascots, and I had one before the show started, and I can't really wear them anymore. I will always go back to what Chuck Bass was wearing on the day that he tried to play basketball. Just play some ball. <laughs> that was truly, truly epic. Of course, the 100th episode, Blair's princess wedding is, you know, I think it's one of the most beautiful weddings on television. Is everything okay in here, Blair? You are an artist. Working with Vera Wang to go into her showroom and actually be able to work with her on a one-to-one -one basis and, like, see all these amazing dresses. I have an amazing team of assistants that really helped me get in all these Philip Tracy hats and... It really worked our butts off to make that look just right. Now, if we can continue. To be on a television show that had access to all the best fashion in the world, and then to learn from the best, not just through Eric Damon, but the designers that we got to meet. I heard Mark Jacobs named a purse after her. A lot of them have become fashion icons. Most of them are on the covers of magazines or doing perfume ads, or, you know, we see them everywhere. He definitely taught me how to accessorize, particularly in this last season during our fittings. Eric and I are just like a necklace and earrings and a cuff and and rings and studded necklace and studded coat. We're just like, is that too much? No, put another thing on. Welcome to the Upper East Side. This is Isaac Mizrahi. See. So. Okay, Alexa, it's your turn. <laughs> oh my. We've been really, really lucky in the way that fashion has been a part of the show, and then we've been able to benefit from that and get the fashion community to help us out and be a part of it. And appear on the show. Thank you so much for seeing me on short notice. You came highly recommended by Anna Wintour. So then Eric finds himself having to dress, you know, big designers. Michael Kors was easy because he wears his black t-shirt and his black blazer. Didn't go so well for those who show up at Blair's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for Rachel Zoe, who had a chocolate fountain pour on her head. She wore that beautiful cobalt blue Pucci dress, and then we covered it in chocolate syrup. I 
day. I think they've been intelligent with guest stars and with references. Isn't that Alexandra Richards? People from the art community and socialites. It's kind of funny to see them in their element, but they're so not in their element, and check with them if we're doing it right. This is Tinsley Mortimer. Cindy Lauper. And this is Sloane Crossley, the best-selling author of I Was Told There'd Be Cake. I think that was wonderful. It gave a sense of um, authenticity to the stories and to the world. Everyone's talking about it. When we were doing the ballet episode, I don't know anything about the ballet, so I was just sort of like, tell me who the ballet people are and let's invite them. I think they're called ballerinas. <laughs> Sorry.